Hello, welcome back to Venn Diagrams. Again, not Venn Diagrams. Okay, so before we looked at this one, we had the kids in the class, and apparently our class is giant, and 15 of them wearing, were wearing jeans, 12 were wearing hoodies, 8 were wearing both, and 14 didn't have jeans or hoodies, right? So this is just the normal, oops, the normal Venn diagram. Normally I would color this, but I haven't really figured out in, uh, in Google Slides how to get this to be a different color from those two. So we'll just pretend. Okay. So this is our Venn diagram. And we want to use this now because we're getting into probability. And we want to be able to do that. Let's see. Let me get this to move down a little. Okay. Yay. I'm going to move this down so I can put me a little title. We're doing probability. Okay. So the basic thing with probability, the basic way you calculate this. So the probability of something happening is the total number of possibilities. No, the total desired number of outcomes divided by the total possible outcomes. That sounded crazy. Okay, maybe I want to use this. Okay, probability. This is way easier. Normally I do this on my iPad because it's easier, but I wanted to do this using Google Slides for some reason because I thought I would be cool like that. Okay, so probability of something happening. Let's say you have a coin. So a coin has two possible outcomes, right? It has heads and it has tails. What? Let's do this. So we have heads and we have tails. Those are the two possible outcomes, right? So total possible outcomes. There are two, because you could have heads or you could have tails. Now, if you wanted the probability, let's say you flip a coin and you want the probability that it's going to land on heads. Well, there's only one side that's heads, right? So there's one side that's heads, there's one side that's tails. So if I say prob probability of getting heads, the way we write that, so probability of heads. The way we write that is we do a capital P parentheses heads. And that stands for probability of heads. This is the desired outcome divided by total possible. So in our case, the desired outcome is heads. So We have these two possible outcomes. They're testing the bells. Like this is, yeah, okay. I, I kind of feel like I need yoga right about now. So I'm going to make this look like a fraction. So there's one possible up here. So desired, we're going to do desired over total possible. Move my little line. Okay. This is way easier with the iPad. I should have brought my iPad. I'm not sure what I was thinking, or maybe I just wasn't. Okay. So it's the desired outcome, which is heads, divided by the total possible. So in our case, this is then There's one possibility of heads, right? One possible heads. There are two possible outcomes because you could have heads or tails. So I'm going to draw my little line. 
So the probability of getting a heads is one out of two or 50%, right? Because one divided by two is 0.5. If I multiply that by 100, it change it into percent, that's 50%. So I have a 50% chance of getting heads. I also have a 50% chance of getting tails. So that's basic probability. So it's the desired, the number of desired outcomes, in this case heads, over total possible. So like, let's say you had a dice. A die? Anyway, you're rolling dice. And let's say, so with a dice, you have six sides. So let's say you want to know the probability of getting an even number, right? You've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So your even numbers will be two, four, and six. So there are three of those, right? So if I put here probability of even, so there are six total possible and evens, there are three of those. So I would have three possible. I mean, three desired, and I have six total. So if I do my line here, so I have three possible, six total, and so that would give me three over six, or it would give me one over two. Right. So that would be my probability of getting an even number if I'm rolling a dice. So I can apply this to Venn diagrams too. So here's our Venn diagram. So we have 15 people wearing jeans, eight wearing jeans and a hoodie, 12 wearing hoodies, and 14 not wearing jeans or a hoodie. So if I, if I add all of these up, which I did before, I had 49 total students. So 49 total. So if I, I pick somebody randomly, like I wasn't looking, I'm blindfolded and I went, you. If you ask me the question, well, what's the probability that I pick somebody wearing jeans? But probability if you pick somebody randomly. What is probability that you pick somebody wearing jeans? Now notice in this case, I just said wearing jeans. It, I didn't say anything about the hoodie. So they could be wearing jeans. They could also be wearing a hoodie as long as they have jeans on, right? So if I pick randomly, what's the probability I pick somebody wearing jeans? So this is a little bit tricky. So it's not just 15. So normally you want desired over total possible, right? So if it was just jeans, but not jeans and a hoodie, it would be 15 over 49. But in this case, I want the probability of somebody wearing jeans. Well, the people wearing jeans include these people right here, but it also includes these people right here. So total wearing jeans, and I might sneeze in a minute. me. Okay, wearing jeans, I have 15 wearing jeans, I have eight wearing jeans and a hoodie. So this is 15 plus eight. So this is 23. <clears throat> Excuse me, my videos are not going well. I've had PA interrupting where I had to record the last video like four times and now I'm sneezing. Not good. But I will push through we will get through probability. Okay, so this is my total possible this is my total desired right? Because I'm just looking for the people wearing jeans. So then this is the number that I'm going to use in the top of my little equation. So my equation has this. So I'm going to go probability of jeans. And then I have two possible, right? Or I have two, two parts of this. I have desired over total. So my desired is 23. And my total possible outcomes is I'm picking from 49 people. So that would be that. So let me put my little line. So my probability, if I just pick somebody randomly, the probability that I pick somebody who's wearing jeans, just jeans or jeans and a hoodie, would be 23 out of 49. So that's, that's that. If I picked randomly and... I wanted to know what's the probability that I pick somebody with jeans and a hoodie. So probability jeans and hoodie. This would be, I have jeans and a hoodie is just eight people. 
So I would put eight. And again, the total number of people I'm picking from is 49. So that's what I would put. Let me put my little line. So the probability that I randomly pick somebody who has on jeans and a hoodie would be eight over 49. So that that's all we're doing with, with probability. We're taking the possible outcomes and we're dividing it by the total, I mean, the desired outcomes and dividing it by the total possible outcomes. So yeah, so probability would be that. We can actually divide and convert it into a, a percent, which we'll do later, but we're not doing that right now. We're just introducing probability. So Venn diagram, probability, yay.